Hey everyone, Higher Running Coach and Hagan and Chorus Athlete Sage Kande here. The training talk on Zone 2 training, building that aerobic base. Something I've preached over the last 15 years on this YouTube channel. And you know, things have changed over the years of training theory, but also in my personal adventures. Uh, as getting older, I found that mixing up the variety of endurance activities throughout the course of a year uh, could really make a difference and really give you the most bang for your buck. It's also a lot more fun. So varying the activities uh, with things like ski mountaineering, skimo, which Hagan, of course, makes great skis and equipment for. This video is sponsored by them. Full uh, ad disclaimer there. Hagan skis. I have the Ultra 79 here, which I found very useful in my winter mountain training. I got lightweight bindings, lightweight boots, skins, you name it. Check them out. Hagan Ski USA. I'll put the Instagram as well as the website link uh, in the description below. But uh, again, thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Multi athlete, uh, some people call themselves hybrid athletes. Those are more people that lift weights and run, but you might be more of a mountain athlete uh, like myself, or I try to be, uh, moving to Colorado in the mountains where we get a lot of snow in the winter. I can embrace that snow with different activities that are non-impact. More on that later. So the idea is that you're changing things up throughout the course of a year, and we think of it in terms of micro cycles in training, but also macro cycles in training. And for an Olympic athlete, a macro cycle might be every four years, every Olympic cycle. It might be a 12 month cycle. It might be a calendar year where if you're a pro road marathon runner, you're peaking for a spring marathon, then a fall marathon. Or if you're a, a high school or collegiate athlete, maybe you have cross country season in the fall and then uh, track season in the, well, sometimes indoor track in the winter and outdoor track in the spring. So then you're building base over the summer as well. So it really depends what climate you're in, what hemisphere you're in, and what you like. Some people like cycling, but the idea is that we're operating at zone two. And I've, again, I've done a lot of talks on this channel about zone two training, easy conversational activities, getting the blood flowing, spending that time on feet, getting in the volume. So we're talking about heart rate values of under 75, 78% usually. You could carry on a conversation when you're doing that activity. It's that low intensity. It might be a little harder if you're skinning straight up a mountain at, at 10,000 feet or 3,000 meters high altitude. Uh, you might be huffing and puffing a little, but you're not going to the well. You're not pushing hard mentally and you're not pushing your, your skeletal muscular system really hard physically. You're not getting high lactate values, so to speak. And you know, how do I keep track of that? Well, it's kind of the purpose of the talk is the ebbs and flows of training go with different activities, go with different cycles of training throughout the year. And, you know, I'm wearing Koros armband heart rate strap. This video is also sponsored by them. Plug for Koros. Check out that discount code. Uh, I look at my uh, metrics on the Koros training hub. I'm always wearing my heart rate monitor, basically. I got a GPS watch. This is the Apex 2 Pro from Koros. But in their training club, I could see my distribution of training. I also use Strava, by the way. And I could kind of see the ratios. You know, a lot of people talk about 80-20 training. Are you doing 80% of your volume under 80% maximum heart rate, essentially? Or is it 80% of your training is zone one or zone two? Pretty easy, low intensity. Now, the purpose of this talk is to tell you you want to be doing that, obviously, a lot over the course of the year, but that ratio might change slightly. It might change in your off-season uh, a bit. You might be doing 90 to 100% of zone 2 training, as well as like strength training, like weightlifting or dynamic drills, uh, stuff like that. Whereas in your peak training, maybe you're doing 30% quality uh, that's higher than, than zone two training. And it depends a bit if you're a multi-sport athlete, if you're a cyclist or you're focusing on ski mountaineering, ski mo, uh, or you're focusing on cross country skiing, or you're just a pure runner, uh, like me. But again, good to mix it up even for the runners out there and the skiers out there, uh, doing different activities to fit the season could really help give you that extra edge and help boost your performance overall. So what does that really look like in terms of training distribution? And you can see some of the details on uh, the Chorus uh, lab. Um, they've got the Chorus training hub lab there with all the numbers and the data. We could also look at it on Strava, but the idea is that in your off season and realize for me as a runner, my off season, off season I put in quotes, is more in the winter. Uh, when I'm doing things like ski mountaineering, uh, using the Hagan skis to skin uphill, great workout, 
building aerobic base, building time on feet, developing strength. Uh, but it's not, I'm not a professional skier. Uh, I'm not as, as competitive, obviously, on the skis, more of a beginner than I am at mountain running, which the focus is now in the summer. Whereas if you're a cross country skier, Nordic racer, uh, ski mountaineer, getting ready for skimo right now in the summer in the Northern Hemisphere, summer to, to fall is more of your off season and you should be building more aerobic base. So it kind of flips with the calendar year, depending on maybe what your focus sport is and what hemisphere you're in, what the weather's like, uh, you may be focusing more on an off season of aerobic base building. And that's when the focus of zone two training, low intensity, but higher volume really comes into play. And, you know, a final note in this training talk is that I think of it always in, in terms of two major different systems, right? You have your, your skeletal muscular system, the tendons, the bones, ligaments, uh, and your muscles that you want to build and be strong with, right? You don't want to have uh, blunt force injury if you take a fall, twist an ankle trail running, or you fall skiing. God forbid, you don't want to blow out your knee or, or strain anything, break a bone. You want to be really strong overall for those lateral movements side to side as well as repetitive strain. Don't want to be straining muscles from exercising too much. But then on the flip side, and this is the main focus of zone two training, is, is the cardiovascular system, your heart, your lungs, your blood flow, things like developing mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, the size and density of mitochondria, but also efficient metabolism and how you utilize oxygen, how you efficiently you burn fat as a fuel to spare glycogen, um, as well as getting good blood flow to the muscles, being able to keep those lactate levels lower and be able to operate at a higher relative intensity for longer periods of time. We're talking about being able to go for hours on end in these long endurance events, whether you're running a half marathon or marathon or ultra marathon, or you're doing a multi-hour hard uh, schemo effort where you really got to skin uphill fast or you're, you're doing flat out cross country skiing and you're just racing at pretty high heart rates for a pretty long time. So it all goes back to that endurance and building that endurance and that efficiency of the heart and lungs, the cardiovascular system, goes with getting in volume. So the volume, the consistency is almost more important in the off season, so to speak. And it's in these months leading into your peak season that really matter because you wanna put that time in on your feet. You wanna rack the vertical, you wanna rack the volume, but you wanna do it at a relatively low intensity because mentally it's too hard. If you're always straining all the time, you're not having fun, you're suffering mentally, you've got high lactate levels, you're gonna get exhausted. Uh, and it's more of an injury risk, especially if you're doing an impact sport like running with each step. If you're running too fast on your easy days, it's a lot of strain on the skeletal muscular system. You could get a stress fracture, muscle strain, things like that. So keeping the intensity low is extra important on uh, you know, non-impact swimming, cycling, even doing schemo you have less of that, that gravitational force, less impact force, so you could actually put in more time on feet at relatively high heart rate values, but you still don't wanna exhaust yourself mentally. You still don't wanna be spiking lactate values super high too early in the season, otherwise you're gonna literally and figuratively burn out by the time you have to actually race in the peak of your season, which could be several months down the line, be it three, four, five, six months down the line. You're thinking in terms of those training cycles. Uh, so, and then you have to take a break and kind of reset the system, so to speak. So it's thinking of your zone two training and ebbing and flowing with the volume and low intensity, and then getting more specific with harder workouts as you get into the heart of your racing season, and you could even race yourself into shape if you have a series of, of several races to compete in during your peak competitive season. So uh, that's kind of my take on that with the zone two training. Comment below if you find these training talks helpful. Again, check out my playlist library. I've done tons of talks, mainly for marathoners and ultra marathon runners, focused on what zone two training looks like, as well as threshold training, VO2 max training, long runs, you name it. Uh, thanks for subscribing on here. Again, check out Hagan Ski USA. Uh, I got the website as well as their Instagram handle, link in the bio. They've got great products. They go down to 65 millimeters in the width for the Ultra 65. Again, this is the Ultra 
uh, 79 ski. I got a pure 10 binding on there. Lightweight skins as well. The hybrid skins are great to use uh, and you just feel super fast on the snow. So check that out. Check out Koros. Again, uh, enter code SAGE when you purchase a GPS watch and get a free gift item from the store. That is uh, Koros Global on social media. So thanks for their support. Hope you're doing well. Thanks to Patreon supporters for keeping this channel alive. Like and subscribe. Uh, share these videos on social media. Hope your training is going well and stay tuned for more VO2 Max Productions.